Hey, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about void functions. What the heck is a void function? Well, this is a function that's not a void function. And the reason it's not a void function is because it has a return value result, and that's of type double. But we can actually create functions that don't return values, and those are called void functions. They're void of a return, essentially. Now, on a side note, if you feel like you have a void in your life where you need a really, really good C++ IDE, but you got absolutely nothing to fill that void, let me tell you guys, I have just the solution. Embarcadero C++ Builder is exactly what you need. And don't worry, C++ Builder has a community edition where you can get this tool completely free. It's going to give you everything you need to create awesome C++ applications. So this means debugging, awesome visual design, great tools to work with databases, and on top of that, you can deploy to four modern operating systems, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Talk about legit. Check them out, guys. I'll leave a link for you in the description. So now that you got that void filled, let's talk about void functions. So let's say we wanted to create a function that does something, but doesn't necessarily calculate a value and return it. Some common examples I can think of are logging. You can call a logging function to go right to some files or something. It's not necessarily going to calculate a value and return it, but it's still going to do something. Or we might want to write a function to easily output stuff to the console. And that's what we're going to do in this video, because if you scroll down in this code here, we have this main where we're doing a bunch of these C outs and it's kind of ugly. And what if we wanted to do this essentially a couple of times? Well, we would have to copy all this and paste it and it's just really ugly. So we're gonna make our own function to do it for us. We're also going to see how you can call other functions from functions and how basically it becomes this giant chain of function calls. That should be pretty clear though because we're currently in a main function and we're calling a function in it. So main is like the root of our function calls. Then we call another function inside of that. So let's create another one and we're gonna do that right here because I don't wanna have to put the declaration up top and then the definition down here. So let's just put it up here and we're going to say void and we're gonna call this print stuff. Very descriptive. <laughs> Actually, let's call it print pow. For one, it sounds cooler and it's a little bit more descriptive. So what the heck is this gonna do? Well, basically it's going to take a base and an exponent and then it's going to call the power function and do some pretty outputting for us. So what we need to do is we need to say double base and then we're just gonna have an int exponent. I'm sure you could make a double exponent if you wanted fractional exponents, but it's a little bit beyond my uh, capabilities because I'm terrible at math, so <laughs> we'll keep it simple. All right, what are we gonna do here? Well, the first thing we can do is we can literally just copy all of this junk and we're gonna paste that inside of our print pal function. Clean it up a little bit. Now, since we have these parameters that are going to get values passed in as arguments, we don't need to declare these variables here. So we need to get rid of that line. And I have two options. When it comes to getting the values from the user, do you wanna do that inside of the print pal function or do you wanna do that inside of main? I would argue that this stuff would be more appropriate to leave inside of main, at least with how the power function is scoped now because it's called print pal. It has nothing to do with getting the base and exponent from user input. So that kind of goes with the general rule that functions should only do one thing and that one thing should be clearly seen in the identifier. So because of that, I am going to take these out and move that back to main. And this function is just going to take the power and print it. The next thing we're going to do is make this function print this in a little bit more pretty way. So right now what it's going to do is it's just going to print the power, that's it. It's not going to say what it is or anything. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a string in here and we're going to print that before the variable. Actually, the format for this that I'm thinking is saying, let's say the base is 10 and the exponent's three. We could say 10 raised to the three power is, and then put the value right here. So we actually need to start with the base. So it's gonna look like this. Base, and then we're going to say raised to the, and then we're going to say exponent, and then another string that says power is, and then it's going to print the value right there. And then if you wanna make it real pretty, you could even put a period at the end, <laughs> like so. And I'm just gonna do the new line there so we can get rid of this, just like so. Awesome. So I can envision this as 10 raised to the third power is 1,000. 
and you can see that this function is actually calling the power function. So eventually what's gonna happen is main calls print pow, and then print pow calls power. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a tongue twister. So inside a main, let's talk about how we call this. Well, we can call it like this. We just say print pow, and then inside of parentheses, we pass in the arguments. Now, do we actually have to do anything with this? Do we have to assign it to a variable or anything? No, absolutely not. When you have a void function, you just call it by itself and you don't do anything in the calling part of it. Well, this doesn't even make sense because print pow doesn't return a value, so it doesn't make sense to assign it to a variable. It's just stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, now I'm probably gonna compile and get like a million errors, so let's just see what we have to do. Now before this is complete, we have to think about where these variables come from. Originally we had the declarations that we had up in this print pal, but we got rid of them because print pal isn't gonna need those. It would have been more appropriate to keep them down here, so sorry about that. So we're gonna have a double base and then an int exponent, like so. All right, so now it should work, let's see. No compiling errors, let's give it a run and see what happens. What is the base? What is the exponent? Three. 10 raised to the three power is a thousand. Awesome. So that is how you work with void functions. The benefit here is that we could do this numerous times without having to repeat ourselves. So we just say print pow, we could pass in a hundred, raise that to the fourth power. We could call it again and say, hey, let's raise four to the second power, whatever it is. The benefit though is that we can go up here and we can change the formatting and we only have to change that in one place. We don't have this output here copied in like 10,000 places throughout our program. We just have function calls. So now when we output this, you can see the outputs are very pretty. 10 raised to the three power is a thousand, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so that my friend is avoid functions. Hopefully that was nice and simple for you guys. By now you're basically probably a function master, so you can probably resign from this series and forever work a nine to five job. <laughs> Sounds fun. All right, well, that's all I got for you guys in this video. Next video, we're gonna start talking about data types. Oh yeah. So far we've used int and double and we've talked about void, which is no data type return for functions, but now we're gonna be getting into a little bit more detail. What do we need to know to master data types? That's what we're gonna be talking about. Thanks guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed this content and I'll see you in the next video.